Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing amazingly well. In today's video, we'll talk about the main reason for me and I'm sure many other Tesla owners to buy their Tesla, that is autopilot. Now, just to give you all some context, I've never owned a car with even typical cruise control and I do travel a lot on highways. So the new car having good cruise control was always on top of my shopping list. When we were test driving the cars, almost every car that we shortlisted had a cruise control, in fact an adaptive cruise control, which is supposed to be good for a start and stop condition as well. But in my opinion, these systems in those few cars were doing just okay when the car is maintaining a constant speed, but when it comes to start and stop traffic, the jerk motion was causing more discomfort rather than relaxation. This is mainly due to the conventional cars having to adjust the gears and power. But in electric cars, these problems are minimized as they only have one gear to work with. More than that, Tesla built their reputation on being a technologically advanced company and their autopilot full self-drive feature along with its cars being super efficient shows that they excel with a big margin. So without any further delay, let's see how the autopilot works on my drive from Gold Coast back to Brisbane. And I'll also share my experience with how I prefer to use the autopilot and what are a little bit of tricks that I use to control the autopilot even better. So currently, as you can see, or if you know how the Tesla autopilot works, you might be able to figure out that Tesla autopilot is on. The way it is indicated on screen is by the blue color on the right hand side of the screen. So as you can see, the lanes are marked with blue color, which means the car is recognizing which lanes it need to follow. So if it's blue, which means the car is on autopilot and it's on auto steer. Same is indicated with the steering being turned to blue. And this on the left side of where there is a blue marker underneath the speed, that's your speed limit. So that will be on even if you're on cruise control. And on autopilot, every three aspects, which is the speed, steering and keeping in the lanes would be blue. And it accommodates for the car that just got in front of us. Currently the speed limit is 70, but depending on how far the front car is, our car is maintaining the speed. I'm not giving any input at this stage. So the car is steering itself, I haven't I'm barely touching the steering wheel, just in case I need to take control, but I'm pretty sure the car is going to handle the scenario fairly well. So autopilot basically allows you to stay in the lane, steer in the lane. As long as there are clear lane markings, you should be fine. And the car is wanting me to put some pressure on the wheel now or turning force so the way it works is like you can just lift or pull it down like it should be enough that it's, it doesn't feel like a, you want to take over so I reduce the speed of the autopilot because I know even though it detects the speed it doesn't always cater for it and it doesn't reduce the speed so that might be one of the features that we have in full self-driving but not in autopilot so for autopilot, you need to be aware of the speed. So as you can see, we have to go on the right. So I'll indicate. And now autopilot disengaged because there were too many lane markings and it wasn't sure where it wanted to go. So you have to take control in such situations. But given the scenario, the car is still on cruise. It's cruising fine on 60. And if there's a car in front of us, Tesla is going to slow down on its own. And the way you can manage the speed, let's say if the speed limit is 80, is three ways. One, you can use the acceleration pedal, take it to 80, and then hit the stock on the right once for setting that limit, or twice for activating the autopilot on the current speed. The other way to change the speed on the go on autopilot is either by clicking here on the speed limit that is shown. Let's say I've set it to 70 just for just for showing it. Let's say the speed limit is 80, but your car is traveling at 70 and you've set it to 70. So you can click on this 80 speed limit. And now the max speed limit of the autopilot at this stage is set to 80 now. And if you don't want to touch the screen, you can always control the speed limit of the cruise control by the right stock wheel. And if you drag it down, the speed limit is going to go down. If you drag it up, the speed limit is going to go up. And one more feature, which is like if you turn it 
slightly, then the reduction or the increase of speed is by one increment. But if you swipe the wheel, the increment is in five kilometers speed limit. So if I have to quickly bring the speed down of the car, I can just swipe it down and the increments that it got reduced in is five. But the speed limit is 80, let's put it at 80. Now, as you can see, the car is driving at 70 because we put down the distance from the front of the car to the width two. And what happens if we increase the distance to seven is our car slows down a bit, just backs it off. And as you can see, now the car speed has reduced and the distance between us and the car in front has increased also. So on highways, I usually drive it at three car distance length. And that's where I feel safe. And if the car is not taking control or doing the maneuver I wanted to do, I still have enough time and confidence that I'll be able to control the situation. But in situations like this, when the speed limit is 80, you can even put it at two and the car uh, drives fairly close to the front of the car. Depending on how fast the car is traveling, you can set this distance or how comfortable you are with the cruise control. So I'm comfortable enough that I can put it at two to most stages. But if I'm traveling 110 kilometers an hour and I know the car in front of me can brake suddenly because that's what the behavior of the car I've noticed, then I can always increase the distance between me and the front of the car to be a bit more, just to be on the safer side. But as you can see, the car is driving itself on autopilot fairly good. And this is not a highway situation. It's just a straight road with lane markings. And I know that I don't have to turn right until 2.3 kilometers. So it handles this situation fairly well. And as you can see, although the lines were missing, it just adjusts itself and sees the front car as well as the lines if it can spot. And after wavering just a bit, it just gets back in line. And this was, again, it's been a while since I touched the steering or put the force turning force. Now that's a perfect example of car handling the brake in the lines as well as the traffic lights. So if the traffic lights were not green and if they were red, the car would not stop. And now I can see the speed limit to be coming down to 60. So I like to just bring the speed limit down by just dragging this scroll wheel like four times from 80 and that's perfect. So that's to make sure that before you reach to that limit, your car is in perfect speed. And as you can see, the street now has turned down to a two-way street. It's very narrow. There are cars parked on the left, but there's no problem like the cars handling all this fairly well and I don't have to take over. The only situation where I see uh, the car not acting properly is like if there's no lane markings on the left. Currently all the cars that were parked were parked on the left of a lane marking. So Tesla does recognize that, you know, a lane marking and you have to stick in your lane. But if you're driving in a suburb and you try to turn on the autopilot or even cruise control and there are no lane markings, in those scenarios, Tesla thinks that the car in front of us is actually traveling and they've stopped. So it takes a bit of time to adjust and see if the car is actually traveling or is it parked on the side because there's no lane marking. So technically you're not allowed to or you should not be driving on autopilot or cruise control in those situations. Let's turn the lane because we have to turn right. Now when you turn the lane, the autopilot disengages, but the cruise control still remains. To disengage this cruise control, you'll have to either push the brake or uh, pull the right stock up. So that disengages everything. Let's say we do it now. So the speed limit has turned to 100 and now it is showing here. So I, what I do is I hit the right stock once. That puts the car on cruise control. And the reason I do it is because I know I'll be turning towards right. So I just do this turn on my own. And this is where the right camera feed comes in handy because I can see the cars coming in. And as soon as I have a clear path, I'll take down to this second lane from the right and turn on the autopilot and it says keep your hands on the wheel as a warning as always and now the car's on autopilot and this is the situation or the perfect environment for autopilot where there's highway driving there are clear lane markings 
no issues at all. I couldn't find uh, there's many issues either way driving through suburbs as well, as long as there are lane markings. But you have to be extra cautious while using autopilot or even cruise control within suburbs. But on highways, you could be a bit more relaxed. And the car's sensing that I haven't put the steering wheel force in a while, and it's just asking me to do it. And that's how it says. Like if you don't do it, it just starts showing you visually that you haven't touched it. And if you don't see even then, then uh, there might be sounds coming through the system just to let you know that either uh, put some force to the steering wheel, otherwise the autopilot start to disengage. We might do a test, uh, not today, but uh, some sometime in future, where we let the autopilot just uh, go without a force and see how Tesla responds to that. But so today, let's just try the normal scenario of the autopilot where you just put a little bit of turning force. Now the car in front of us is traveling 97 kilometers an hour. So let's just switch the lane and engage the autopilot again. And as you can see, the car's picking up the speed now. So I think as long as you're fine with the slow moving traffic or the speed of the traffic, you can always stay in one lane and let the car drive because usually on highways, uh, the middle lane goes straight and you don't have to worry about the turns and mergers. The right, you're meant to be in the right lane only in case you are overtaking. So they gave us a amazing feature, which was that um, camera feedback and you can move the camera feedback now, but they sneaked in one of the most annoying feature that I've come across since I've owned the Tesla, which is like if you not on autopilot, you switch on the autopilot, automatically the high beam turns on. And this might be a safety feature, which obviously was not there before that update. And that's why it's so annoying. Right now I am on autopilot, but this icon which says I'm, I do have auto high beam on is just not what I'm used to. And it's a bit annoying. You can always turn it off by pushing this left stop forward, but it's just an extra step that you have to do. <coughs> I think if you do uh, turn on the autopilot at night and there's no cars around, then the auto head beam would turn on. And it might annoy the oncoming traffic because in scenarios and roads like this, when there's no, not actually any car in front of you, but on the other side, and there are tree lines in between. So the car, so Tesla wouldn't, won't be able to see the other car, but it's still annoying to give them the high, high beam flashes for no reason. And that's it guy was driving fairly close to us so I think it's time to turn to the left lane and let him go past so just like everywhere else in the world there are people who are always in hurry and wants to drive more than the speed limit and this is one such cases like look at him go another one So let's see how the energy consumption is going. So I've traveled for 141 kilometers today, which took 17 kilowatts of total energy, and we are averaging at 124 watt hour per kilometer. So just to give you a reference, one kilowatt hour costs us 20 cents. So 10 kilowatt hour would have costed us $2. So this 20 kilowatt hour that we are reaching would cost us $4. So basically in $4, I would travel to Gold Coast and I'm heading back. Can always do a recharge in the way as well because there's a lot of charges which are around in Gold Coast area and even in our way back. So let's see where the charge is at. As you can see, there's a lot of super charges around, and if we turn on the normal charges, there's heaps there. But our car is showing we're going to reach our destination with 53% of charge limit, which is more than enough for us. So for the most part, even though you're driving on autopilot or cruise control, the best part is you don't have to touch the brake pedal or the acceleration pedal until unless you want to accelerate yourself or you want to drive your car yourself. Or there's a situation where you have to apply the emergency brakes. 
like the car would do it, but if you don't trust it or if there's a situation where you need to take control and handle the situation manually, then you can use them. Otherwise, on highways, you can drive the car with just steering and the controls on the left and right stock, and you would be fine. And that's actually quite relaxing on your back and feet. And the fact that you don't have to pay attention to every aspect of the gears, the brake, the accelerator, it's very relaxing and it's less tiring. But overall, I don't think I would have bought a Tesla if it didn't have an autopilot, and especially at that amazing level as it is now. So that would be the quick update on the Tesla's autopilot feature and how I use it. Thanks for watching the video and please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. And let me know if there's any other topic that you want me to cover in my Tesla videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.